sing? Um, yeah, I'm not sure it's all sunk in yet. No. Um, you know, we've had quite a lot of things to, to do. You know, we had Downing Street, we had the uh, head down to the Oval the day after mm -hmm. uh, the game. So I'm, I'm not really sure everything's all really sunk in. But when did you sober up? Um, <laughs> now? <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah. Ben, let's, let's just go back to the day because it had been a, a pretty rocky tournament for England. We were the favourites going into it. We were doing great. Then we had a few defeats that were quite shocking mm -hmm. and it looked like suddenly we may miss out again and the heartbreak was going to come. Then we fought back and had a couple of great wins. And then we get to the final. And for most of that day, it was a hard-fought, quite gritty, tough game mm -hmm. of cricket. It wasn't the kind of six-hitting extravaganza some people were hopeful, but for cricket periods like me, fascinating battle. I knew if I got one run, we at least got to a super over. Mm. Um, and if I put it to you know the left or right of the fielder, then we should be able to come back for two. But unfortunately, I, I hit it straight to him. Um, and you know I was annoyed at myself, I was angry, I thought I'd thrown it away. Um, but when I went upstairs, I had to give myself five minutes because Morgs asked me to go back out and do the super. Did over. you want to go back out? Uh, and at first you must be said, exhausted. You scored 85, you'd been out there for hours. After I said that we should send Joss and Jason out. Yeah. But Morg said, no, we need a left-right because it's a small Morgan? boundary. Is yeah. Morgan? But the left-right was interesting because there was one much smaller boundary and it, yeah. it could give us an advantage in that moment. Also, you were so pumped up, mm -hmm. I would imagine, from what had happened. You were in that moment. Quite hard for batsmen to come in for one over and just blaze away if they'd been sitting up there for a couple of hours. So it could work both ways, right? Yeah, I, th I had to go, you know, out the back of the into the shower room and just give myself five minutes. And, and what were you thinking? I mean, you've just, you've just nearly won the World Cup. Mm. You've come a dive away from winning the World Cup, and now you've got to somehow get yourself together for a super over. What's the mindset of someone like you in that position? I think when it's a super over, you know what you have to do. There's, it's literally trying to hit every ball for uh, four or six. Had you been in one before? Never. And you never want to do one again. No. Why not? It was. To go out there and, you know, have the pressure on your batting first to try and get as many runs as you can, it, was, um, it is a scary place to be, especially in the World Cup final. Um, but I think I'd rather be out there in the middle trying to do it than have to watch, because that is the worst mm. place to be, is when you watch and you know you can't influence something that's going out, that, uh, going out in the middle. Um, but yeah, it was, it's, not, it's not one of the things that I ever want to be involved in again. Just well, you got, you got 15 runs. Uh, you and Joss Butler, which was pretty competitive. It, not that I'd ever seen one before, so I just assumed 15 seemed good. And Joff got hit for six, I actually laughed. <gasps> you laughed? I like, just gave like a little, oh, wow. Yeah, it was just, it summed up the game that that would have to happen. Because he's an extraordinary character. He's come out of nowhere, really, and become a superstar. But he said that you, in particular, said stuff to him which really helped. C can you remember what you said? I just went up and said, like, because I, I know exactly how he would have been feeling. Um, in that moment in time, I just said, whatever happens here, this isn't going to define your career, which obviously he, how he did, it is, because he defended a super over and won England the World Cup. Um, but I was more coming from a point of view of if it doesn't go well, because um, I know what it's like to, to go through things like that. Well, that T20 well. World yeah. Cup final, when you had to bowl at Carlos Brathwaite yeah. and he slapped you for four consecutive sixes and you just fell to your knees. I was the person who got given the responsibility to bowl that over that day and obviously it didn't that go well, and I definitely wasn't going to bowl it again. Um, so, you know, I, I knew the, the, how he would have been feeling, and he would have been nervous, even though he didn't look like he was. Um, but for a 24-year-old kid to come on and do that on the world's biggest stage in his first summer in England shirt was amazing. Let's get to the last ball. <clears throat> so this last ball, uh, New Zealand need two to win. They have to get 16 <laughs> because we had scored more boundaries in the match. I was at long on, so I was, you know, the furthest possible place away from what happened. So I had to go on the reaction of Joss and all the fielders who could actually see where he was. What were you feeling? <sighs> Dunno, I just sort of broke down. Oh. I slipped, fell over and just starfished on the floor. <laughs> um, I had Mark Wood's glasses on and I think I left, well, I broke them. I was throwing <laughs> them on the floor. Um, didn't quite know how to react and then I, as I got up off the floor, everyone was over the furthest corner at Lord's. So I was like, you could have been a little bit closer. <laughs> so I had to sprint 100 yards over to them and it was just, uh, pandemonium. I can't really remember what everyone was doing. Have really. you watched it back? Um, there's this great video that the ICC yeah, put together, brilliant. a three minute long one. Yes. Um, it's quite emotional to watch back. I've watched that about five or six times as well. It's so a little surprise for you because there have been great all rounders in cricket history uh, before you. It's hard to imagine any cricket before you, but there have been. <laughs> 
And there's one great one, obviously, and there's a great connection. Uh, because when you burst on the scene, you were called the new... And we'll come to him in a minute. And you actually... He's the chairman of the county where you play your, your county cricket whenever you can get a chance to do that. So he's in Spain. He's been rehabbing from his injury. And I got a little message from him last night just for you. Let's listen to this. Sir Ian ben Bogan. Stokes is a name that's now going to go down in the annals of history, and quite rightly. You were magnificent, Ben. Uh, the way you guided that team, uh, you were the finisher. You had a lot of great players around you. It was a magnificent team effort. But sometimes someone's got to stand out. And I thought you were brilliant, particularly on finals day. It's a big moment. Everyone wants to do well in finals day. You did better than that. You were superb. A great performance by yourself and the team. And it is a team job, as you know yourself. And uh, what you've achieved, it'll only probably sink in when you drive down the road and you see the kids playing uh, in their off time, you see the club cricketers out there, and you brought cricket back onto the map in England. Fantastic. Everyone will start wanting to play it and playing it the way that you play it. Ben Stokes, the finisher. I'm pleased to call you a mate, and I'm very, very happy. And by the way, Durham have just won fourth, their fourth game, with one point off promotion. Get back at the end of the Ashes. Cheers, buddy. Well played. Enjoy. Enjoy and celebrate well. Well, Sir Ian Botham, of course, knighted for services to cricket and for charity work. Uh, you know, the greatest all-rounder arguably England has had until you've come along and now won World Cups and who knows what else you'll do in your career. What does it mean to you to have someone like Ian Botham say that to you? Yeah, I mean, you know, having, you know, someone like that to, to say words about, you know, um, use, um, it does sort of bring you back. Um, you know, you, you set out to do things in cricket, um, and to, to win to win World Cups, to win Ashes series, but to have you know a legend of the game like that say stuff like that's pretty special. I never thought I'd see anything to beat Botham's Ashes in '81, and then came the '05 Ashes, which was extraordinary and right up there certainly. I got to say, I think that Sunday was the greatest cricket match I've ever seen. Henry Blofeld said that, and he's seen them all. <laughs> um, if we were to win the Ashes this summer as well. There would never have been a summer like that for English cricket. You're one of the players that plays in both forms of the game. How big is this Ashes series now? Yeah, it's massive. I think before the whole summer started, actually, we knew how big the summer was. You know, to have a World Cup and an Ashes in in England, you know, pretty much straight after each other is huge. Um, we've managed to to achieve half of what we wanted to do, which is winning the World Cup. Um, but, you know, everyone who's involved in the in the Test team as well as the One Day team has sort of had to, you know get their heads around the fact that we have got an Ashes series coming up and we've still got a serious amount of work to do still.